Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games back with another Atlas video. Today we're going to be taking a look at all the creatures in Atlas so far announced and confirmed. But not just that, we're also going to be taking a look at possibilities of what they're going to offer to the game. Best I can, I'm going to sort out the rumours and give you the proof of exactly every creature that's been mentioned or shown off in trailers and screenshots. And then we're also going to talk about some of the mythological creatures and how they may be utilised. This is a heads up for people, this may not be like Ark Survival Evolved. If anyone's expecting a taming simulator again, then they may be bitterly disappointed. Opinion only, I think this game won't allow you to have the same variety of uses for your creatures. I think that's why we've only seen people riding on horses and possibly some of these creatures only being able to pull carts. I don't think you're going to be able to ride every single creature. But that is just my opinion, but there is definitely some facts that I can show you guys and I can definitely give you a bit of a history on some of the creatures that you might not know too much about. So far, as of today, Monday, there is 30 confirmed creatures in Atlas. There's another 20 we've got to discover and I'm sure we're going to do that once the full launch trailer hits at some point this week. And of course, I'm sure there's going to be some creatures that we just won't get to experience until we're sailing the seas of Atlas. So come with me as I explore all the creatures we know so far. So kicking off with this brand new screenshot put on Twitter by Jeremy Stieglitz mentioning about the music of Atlas. It also highlights and confirms that we are getting tigers. I told you guys the other day that tigers are in the game. You can spot one in one of the screenshots where it shows someone climbing. But this is a proper decent close up look at one of them and you can see it's on the bottom left hand side. We've also got confirmed the elephant hiding behind the trees. That's pretty bog standard. We, again, we've seen them in a few of the screenshots and parts of the trailer before. New to me was the idea that we are in fact getting rhinos. Now it's a little bit harder to spot, but you can see here the horn on the end of it and there's the rest of its body. It does look like some sort of variation, almost like a woolly rhino from Ark. It definitely looks like it's got some sort of fur on it on the top of it. And of course, a big, big controversy at the moment in the Atlas Discord is whether or not this is a giraffe or an opaca, op opop, I can't say the bloody word. But some people are saying it's not a full giraffe. But according to Jeremy Stieglitz, who tweeted this out, it is definitely a giraffe. So I'm guessing we're going on ancient creatures, so maybe not as ancient as Ark, obviously. But you can see here, navigating the jungle rover Arapids on a rickety raft, an adventurous explorer spots some of the region's wildlife, including giraffes, elephants, rhinos and tigers. Now, it's going to be pretty cool if you can ride something like a tiger or even a rhino or an elephant or a giraffe. But we've seen none of that in the trailer. The only creatures we've seen players riding are the horses and the dragon. I've also seen from various reports and in the Discord saying that the dragon is only going to be a temporary tame. It won't be something that you can keep forever. It's definitely going to be something that you can only utilise now and then or for a specific amount of time. Just like the Titans in the latest Ark Extinction DLC. Remember this is an MMO and they've recently stated as well the devs that they didn't really think of Ark as being creatures being the main focus of the game. It just turned out that way because that's what everyone wanted. Now, do we really want another game where there's going to be hundreds of creatures to go and tame again? Or are we looking for something a bit different? You guys let me know in the comments section. Do you prefer if they are going to be the focus still and you're going to be utilising these a lot in combat? Or is it a case that these are going to just help you get resources and you may not necessarily be able to do as much as you were previously with some of the creatures from Ark? But typically you would assume that a tiger is going to be there for protection. If you do manage to tame one, it's going to be pretty useful for keeping other creatures at bay. And even if you can't ride it, it certainly would give you a little bit of extra muscle. But I really do think you're not going to be able to tame every creature in the game. So that's four creatures done and dusted, proven they're going to be in the game. So another creature only sort of revealed over the weekend was in fact the ball. Now, if they are going to have their male and female equivalents, just like in Ark, we can expect to see cows as well, but you can clearly see the horns of the bull here. Now, I really do think that horses are going to be the real focus of this game. They're obviously going to be needed to get you from A to B. Getting yourself a good horse is going to be crucial. Maybe not have as sophisticated a system as Red Dead in terms of making your horse more likeable or in terms of bonding with your horse. But certainly the trailer does show the horse is really the only creature that's being utilised in a way other than just pulling wagons. 
We also know from the concept art there is going to be monkeys, but even more official confirmation is the cover artwork for the actual game itself. You can see here we've got the monkey on the shoulder of one of the pirates. And then clearly we've got the parrot on the other shoulder. The parrot has also been in the trailer too. You can see it swooping down, so it's definitely we're going to have these shoulder pets, which I'm guessing have been utilised from Aberration. In Aberration Arcs DLC last year, you could have a multitude of different pets and they had uses for keeping away the enemies because they had light abilities on them. It would be nice to assume that some of these smaller creatures might have uses. We've obviously had monkeys in Ark before, and in Ark they're supposedly meant to be able to unlock doors from the inside if you can get them into buildings, but I've never yet really seen anyone utilise that on a PvP server. Now this next one seems to show the free pool that you're going to be starting on, but it also shows off some of the sea life. Basically it is going to be a swordfish. Now there could be a possibility it's just a marlin, as it still looks a little bit small, but you can see someone is carrying a fish. It does look like you're going to be able to do something like that and carry them over to sell to other players or do something where you can trade them. You can see the tail there clearly, and then you can see just the front, the actual spike. I am no anthropologist, so apologies if I'm butchering the anatomy of these creatures. And once again, we do see the parrot up here. It does look like you can put little hats on it, or maybe that's just the way the feathers are. Now there is a smaller picture I'm going to show you, but on this board it clearly says eggs and chickens. So they look like they're going to be the easiest food source to maybe get hold of, just like dodos in Ark. Now earlier I said we've seen tigers already in a screenshot, but I am starting to really think this is actually a lion. It does look like it may have a couple of stripes, and I realise that is usually only for tigers. But you look, you can see the darkness around it that looks kind of like a mane. And compared to the other picture, it does look a little bit bigger and thicker than the actual tiger was. You can see the tiger there, it's clearly got more of an elongated neck, and you can see it's much more orange. I realise this is really hard to discern from some grainy, horrible, unoptimised images, but it's what we've got currently at to work with. Also, the same goes for this creature, or if it is a creature. Originally, I thought this was some sort of bird, and it does look like it's like a hummingbird facing towards the camera. But what if it's not? What if it's one of the gliders actually flying down? When you compare this image and look at it from a distance and then go back to it, maybe that isn't an actual creature and that is someone utilising one of the gliders. Now obviously in the cover art as well we have got the pictures of the mermaids. I'm going to be talking about them in a little while as I want to cover all the mythological creatures later on. So that's all the creatures from the screenshots, but what about the trailers? I'm going to rattle off all the base normal style creatures that you might come to expect in a game like this, and then we're going to talk in depth about the mythological ones. Chicken confirmed! More chickens and a parrot. Some sort of albatross or eagle. A hammerhead shark that has replaced the original shark from the leaked trailer. The giant massive whale. Also, what the hell is this? That red thing flying across the screen. Could it be a parrot or is it some other sort of seabird that follows the whales around? Maybe it's a flying fish. There are definite fish in the game as well. Obviously we saw from them fishing earlier too. And you can see the dolphins swimming in the water here in the wreckage too. And the PC gamer also mentions the fact the game has mooses in it as well as manta rays. So that's 19 confirmed creatures, if you take into account what I think is a lion, and also take into account that the bears are still in the game, but they have been replaced, I think that's going to be 21. Now when I say the bears have been replaced, from the leaked trailer, the bears were doing a lot of the screenshots alongside the Equus, which is basically the ancestor of the horse. These have been swapped out, but that doesn't mean bears aren't in the game, the bears have just been replaced with a different variation, a striped bear version. You can see it here in this screenshot where I showed you earlier of the flying contraption or is that a creature but either way underneath it all you can just about dimly see the outline of the bear and of course on the other side of these cliffs is where I think is going to be a lion. So 21 sort of normal basic creatures, now let's go over some of the more fantastical ones, the mythological creatures. So the two main obvious ones from this obviously are the Hydra, which the PC Gamer interview gave us a lot more information about. I've covered that already, go and watch that video, I'll leave the link in the description down below. What we haven't really covered so much is this is actually a Cyclops, not an Ogre. 
pretty much all the mythological creatures are based on Greek myth and legends. Now the Cyclops is phenomenally strong, you can see it's lifting a huge massive club. That's going to do massive amounts of damage and AoE attack on anyone nearby. But does its eye do something as well? Possibly spit out some sort of beam just like Cyclops from the X-Men? Or is it just simply a way for you to aim fire and maybe do more damage? Lots of Greek mythology states and stories that you could damage the Cyclops by aiming directly at its yellow eye. So certainly something to be taken considerable care of and it looks like it's going to be a mini boss. I don't think it's a minion of the Hydra. It looks too big just to be one of its little goons. So they've probably just lumped these two together just for the trailer. Now I have gone over the Hydra from the PC Gamer interview already, but basically in a nutshell, you're going to be taking out each one of these heads individually because each one of them fires a different elemental attack. You've got like Thunder, you've got Stun, you've got Darkness, you've got uh, Fire as well as Poison. If you don't kill it in quick enough time, the heads will regrow back. And as confirmed, these are just mini bosses, they aren't the end game boss. The next pair we have are the fire demon and the rock elemental creature. Now I say elemental because that's what generally comes from from Ark. You've got the rock golems in there but it may just be a standard rock golem. It might not have any specialist attacks to do with any sort of element charges. Now we have got the fire demon itself. Obviously you can see there's no lower part of its body. It's got massive claws and it's typical what you'd expect from a nightmarish hell demon pit. Obviously going to be firing some sort of fireball effects at you. Certainly if you get too close to it, will you take any sort of fire damage to yourself? Now at first I thought the golem was flying or hovering in the sky. But you can see just below the map, it does seem to be standing on a little bit of a grassy hill or rise. Either way, there's definitely a disconnection between some of its body parts. It's been held together by some sort of magical force. We're presuming it's going to be pretty strong. We're presuming it's going to take quite a lot of hits. Maybe it will be something like the rock golem from Ark where you need to hit it with specific weapon types to real do damage. So maybe like a cannonball. One of the main enemies we're going to be facing off against is the Damned. Now these guys are going to be patrolling around on the land masses. They'll be coming after you if you go for any buried treasure. And they'll also be in the pirate ships. You're going to have to go over and sink these pirate ships. And there is even a chance, not confirmed yet, that you may be either able to rescue NPCs that have been kidnapped by the Damned on their boats. Or possibly they are the NPCs that you will rescue if you do something on these enemy boats. You can see as well from this image, it does look like there might be a higher version or maybe it's just a different set of armor. Maybe this is armor that you can get for yourself. And of course they're wearing or carrying the flaming swords. Now the flaming swords we know we can get hold of because on the bottom left here, you can see there's a version for us as well. Now it may not be the same sort of elemental attack, maybe different swords have different elemental stuff, but in terms of facing off against the enemies, we will be able to utilize some of their weapons against them. Now what we're looking at here is pretty much Medusa. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really know what a Gorgon was, but after being informed a little bit by Shipwreck's Potato Horse, I went and looked into it a little bit more, and yeah, it pretty much is representative of one of the creatures that basically is Medusa. So it has got snakes for a face or a head. You've really got to zoom in, but you can see the actual snake head really up close. So this creature is gonna have lots of snakes. Maybe it will spit stuff out at you, but more, I'm hoping it will turn you into stone or maybe give you a little stun for five or 10 seconds if you look at them directly or get hit by some of the snakes maybe. We're obviously gonna expect it to maybe move at quite a bit of speed as well since it has got that snake reptilian body and it will be able to do some sort of melee attack. Now, again, I think this is one of the mini bosses. I don't think this is gonna be just a minion, even though it's quite a bit smaller maybe than some of the other creatures, it still seems like it's gonna be a little bit too OP, particularly its heritage, you know, the history of where these mythology creatures come from. Medusa is a really powerful creature. Now, they're referred to as a Gorgon because they are one of three. So who knows, will it be just the one Gorgon, just Medusa? Maybe it'll be the other two as well. And finishing off with the last few now, of course, mermaids. They're in the concept art or the splash page on the Steam page. You can see them on the rocks. And this is a little bit more of a close-up version of the mermaids. Now, don't assume mermaids are just there to be friendly. They may be not going to kiss you in the hope that they transform into a real woman. Maybe they are more like the sirens. Maybe they will cause you damage if you get too close, or you'll be entranced by them, and they may lead you to drown yourself. 
And of course, dragons, not wyvern, actual real dragons. They've got four legs or four arms or two legs, two arms, whatever you want to call it. So yes, they breathe fire. Yes, they fly. But are they going to be a permanent tame? No, it looks like it's going to be time limited. You'll only be able to use the dragons for a short period of time. Very much like the titans in Arc Extinction, the last DLC. How we get hold of one of these, is it going to be completely end game sort of creature you'll be going for? Who knows? But that is what I've seen from a few little questions being asked at the devs in Discord. And last but not least, the final bosses, the actual gods we're going to be facing off against. Basically massive Kraken and that is what a godlike creature is. It's got lots of tentacles you can see and it's causing these storms to arise. You can also see the more of the ghost boats from the dams as well floating around. So it looks like this is going to be a very, very hard thing indeed. Maybe they appear when you're trying to take on one of these guys. We've seen as well from the artwork the tentacles rising up from the water. So maybe they can do damage to ships over time or just simply by attacking or hitting the ships. And certainly the storms it's causing are going to be very dangerous if you get hooked up into there. Maybe it will do serious damage to your ship. It would be absolutely amazing if it could actually pick your ship off. Now the Kraken is actually a bit more modern day times in the 13th century or so around Greenland and Norway where people saw giant squids and this transformed and grew over time to become something more like these giant godlike creatures we've seen. But the idea is you're meant to gather nine artifacts across the atlas map and this is how you take on the final bosses you'll only be able to face off against these krakens and there might be more there may be different types of gods as they refer to in articles and the splash pages but if you take a real quick glance at the steam page right at the bottom it lists exevos or zevos as basically the arch enemy the person you're going to be going up against he's in charge of the undead by it seems and so he may be the final final boss which we may come to face eventually when we complete the game. So there we go, everything I know about all the creatures available in Atlas so far. I'm sure there's going to be many added to it, and maybe I've got one of them slightly misunderstood, but I really think I've done my best to confirm all 30 creatures that we could possibly have seen. If you know any more, let me know in the comment section down below. If there's any creatures you'd like to see for sure in Atlas, make sure you pop it in the comment section, and let me know whether or not you want there to be lots of creatures, to be something similar to Ark, or whether or not you're just happy that we're going to face off against lots of different types of enemies and wildlife in the game. I am Jay Plays Games. I'm going to be giving you everything you need to know about Atlas as it launches and I'll be giving you my honest opinion and review. Don't forget, these are all hype pieces. End of the day, that's all we can go on and it does get me hyped, but I always give you the truth. If the game turns out to be less than Pirate Booty, I will let you guys know. I'm Joe Plays Games. I will see you ratbags later.